What's going on guys? Today we got a bit of an unboxing for y'all. Gino, do you wanna know what's inside the box? Max, do you wanna know what's inside? Milo, what's in the box? Otis. He don't care. Marshmallow, do you wanna know what's in the box? Kane, do you wanna know what's in the box? Everybody wants to know what is in the box. So we will not delay. Let's go ahead and get over here. We gotta lock that because of the cats. Ah, oh, crazy house. Anyways, we are gonna get over here and unbox the Carl's order for this month. We always make a big one every single month. This time it's no different. We have, uh, I'm not even gonna spoil the surprise. We got some good stuff in here. I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. And in today's video, we're also gonna share with you some summertime bass fishing tips. How about that? Let's get into it. But first, let's tell you a little bit about the camera gear because I haven't done an update in a while and uh, we've got some new goodies right here. So we're shooting with the Sony a6400. We also have an a6500. We also have an a6500 that has the 28 to 75 millimeter 2.8 Tamron lens on it. Uh, some GoPro accessories, the Ronin stabilizer, the little micro mic, and then I'm using the external mic I'll talk to you a little bit about right here. Got this little deal right here on my pocket. And then the other attachment is right here for that wireless communication. So I'll use that for a lot of the unboxings, a lot of the I don't know, unboxings. And anyways, we have the wireless mic, we've got the 6400, we have the 17 to 28 millimeter Tamron 2.8 lens, which is a killer. It's not even in stock on B&H right now. You can hardly get this lens, but Canon just came out with a new one. They just announced it. I don't even know if you can buy that one yet. I think it's pre-order still. And it's 18 to 55, 2.8 for your crop sensor camera. So if you guys are balling on a budget like myself and many other people making these YouTube videos, get you a crop sensor camera. I think that 18 to 55, 2.8 is just gonna crush it. It's an exceptional all-around lens. Then we also have this Peter McKinnon filter. You can't hardly see it. You see that little gold ring right there? That is our neutral density filter. That's so that like when we go outside, we can just rotate, we can just rotate that filter. A lot of people talk about the quality in their videos and how if you're shooting at this frame rate, you should double the shutter speed and you'll get the smoothest looking footage. Well, we try and do that. So if we shoot 24 frames a second, we try and keep our shutter speed at a 50th of a second. Well, you can't really do that when you go out into the bright light uh, outside and you're trying to shoot 2.8 or 1.4. And this isn't a camera video, but I'm just talking a little bit about this new equipment briefly. All you do is you rotate this baby right here and then you can keep your shutter speeds where you need without having blown out areas in your video and get that good smooth frame rate that everyone talks about. Anyways, uh, that's that's just the new Peter McKenna neutral density filter. This is the two to five stop Sennheiser mic, two to three hundred bucks. I forget what I spent on it. That's the wireless mic. And then we got the Tamron lens and the A6400. Everything will be linked down below. Let's get to the unboxing. All right, so Shop Carl's. Why do we go with Shop Carl's, Weston, instead of any other bait and tackle store? Well, for us, one of the main things is one of the main things is that we save thirty percent off of all of our tackle baits, everything. And y'all can do the exact same thing too if you check the link in the top of the description use that puppy sign up for the membership and you can get 30% off of everything and your monthly orders as well Carl's is actually sponsoring today's episode so thank you so much to Carl for that this is gonna be a quick one you guys loaded with tips let's go ahead and get into it first of all we have BAM two football fields worth of fluorocarbon line, baby. We got 400 yards. This is the new Guggen Squad 17 pound fluorocarbon. You heard it right. They came out with new strengths in all of their line. And so 17 is what I've been using. And a couple of the spools on our reels are getting low. And so I'm going to re-spool them with this right here. And what do I even mean low? Let me go get a reel real fast. All right, I'm leaving for work in like 40 minutes. Don't even have time to film this video today, but I have to, because tomorrow Devin and I plan on taking the kayaks out and we uh, can't take the kayaks out with all our, our new stuff. Where's a good example? I think any reel that I have is a good example. See how much line is on that spool or not on that spool? See how much extra room there is? Look at all that excess right there. Ooh, I can fit a lot more line on here. And it's getting to a point where when you cast this thing, there's not enough line to hardly even get the distance you want. So I'm gonna be re-spooling the Metanium DC. And another example, this is the Corrado K. Definitely gonna be putting more line on it. Look at that thing right there. Hold on, let me get this focus right not line on this spool. So anyways, that is why we got all this new line because we got to make sure we're good to catch these fish. So 17 pound fluorocarbon, check. Next up we have not one, not two, not three, but we got quite a few new Trash Master jigs. We got some essentially black and blue for that more stained water or just when I feel like throwing this color because I don't care. And then we got the blue craw color. we got two blue craw colors and this is three eighths ounce. They're all three eighths ounce in case you're curious the weight. Uh, I find three eight to work 
just fine in many conditions. So Trash Master Jigs, these things have been selling like hotcakes too. So if you don't have any of these, be sure to get on there and pick some up soon. Heavy cover mini skirt jig. So the, the skirt's just a little bit shorter than most. You can really finesse down and try and go for more bites with these right here. But then also it's got that screw lock, that pin lock where you can twist your plastics on here and really bury this hook. And that's why you're gonna get those results when it comes to the heavy thick cover with the Trash Master Jig. It really gets you into that heavy cover where the bass like to hang out and congregate, especially during the summertime when they just want to get comfy and cozy instead of baking 100 degrees. And these suckers right here can catch some big ones. So Trash Master Jigs, we got a handful. Next, you know we can't go without our lipless crankbaits. And why not grab the newest one on the market, the Clutch. You can't go wrong with Sexy Shad. For us, I've used Sexy Shad in clear water and stained water and blue water and green water. I'm just telling you that this color freaking works. The Clutch is going to be super sick. The reason I like lipless crankbaits is because so the reason we like a lipless crankbait, because you know a lot of those crankbaits are square bills and they have that little square plastic bill right here. Well, that's gonna get them diving to a consistent depth of let's say two feet, four feet, six feet, etc. Well, this guy right here, he just sinks. So he's gonna drop down and you can start reeling whenever you want to get him in the right strike zone. So you could cast this guy out and start reeling immediately and he'll stay close to the surface. Well, if you think they're a little bit deeper, then you can cast him out, give him a second to sink and then start reeling him in and he'll be a little bit lower in that water column and so maybe if they're hanging out suspending five feet deep ten feet deep maybe on some structure maybe you're not just fishing the shallow ponds these lipless crankbaits can really do the trick if you are fishing a, a shallow pond I still recommend these right here because of course you can like I say keep them up and nice and shallow close to the surface of the water whereas if you have a square bill crankbait you're gonna be diving to that two to three feet depth and what happens is when you get closer to the bank all of a sudden you get caught on trees and rocks and all that good stuff it's no fun getting your treble hooks caught and having to worry about losing your crankbaits left and right. So power tip with the lipless crankbaits, these things have been hammering them lately. Oh man, this one we're excited about. I'm breaking him out of the box. We've had two of these before in different colors and we are just adding to the arsenal. This is the third color scheme in the Jackal Gantrell. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the smaller size, but it's still like the biggest swim bait I've thrown. It's uh, what well, well, like of mine, I've thrown other people's swim baits, but when it comes to like, tackle that I've bought. I think it weighs in at 1.5 ounces. Look at this. I was not a fan of this color when I first saw it on the website. I have got to tell you that. And I think it's because I was just like, it doesn't look realistic maybe. But the thing is, I don't believe this one is meant to look realistic. This one is meant to get the attention of bass where the water is not clear, my opinion. I believe you can get away with this guy even in clear water. I am definitely gonna be throwing this in the stained ponds down here in Texas when there is almost no visibility. And I can just slow creep this Jackal Ganterell. He's very slow sinking. This thing has caught us some big fish in the different colors that we have it in. And and uh, I'm telling you what, when all they can see is that darker colored outline and a little bit of that yellow flash on the tail, I think this thing is going to get smoked in those waters where you don't have that same visibility. And that is a, um, that's, that's definitely a good thing. We've knocked out line jigs, lipless, and the Gantro. What else have we got in here? All this last stuff kind of ties in together. And I just did a bulk order on a lot of my weights and stuff this month. So this is for our Texas rigs. We got the new heavy metal tungsten worm weights. These are 3 8 ounce. Uh, 3 8 is, 3 8 is, probably on the heavier side of what I will normally throw. I even sometimes go as low as 1 8 ounce on my Texas rig weights, just because I think if you're fishing shallower water, ponds of that nature, stuff that I get into a lot, you don't need the heavy weight to go real deep. But if you're looking for further cast, if you're fishing deeper water, 3 8 is a great weight. The main difference for you guys when you're picking your weight size is how fast your bait drops. So let's say they're very active on a given day and the bait drops this fast. Well, that could be fine. Well, then you go down to an 8 ounce weight and your bait drops this fast. Think about how much more time the action of that tail, that creature bait, that crawl might have to get their attention as it drifts down. Sometimes that doesn't matter. Sometimes you're fishing deep, heavy weights are necessary, but you get the point, varied it up and we got the three eights because you never know what they're gonna go for. And this time we went with this size here. So that's gonna tie in perfect with the last items in our box. More 
hooks. You guys know we use these for our Texas rigs left and right. These are the Stickies Offset Worm Hooks. 4 ot has been the most popular size for us to throw, but we also have gone with the 3 or the 5. I would say if you're going to get real scientific, you could go as low as like that 3 odd, 2 ot or 3 ot with like maybe your creature baits, then with your craws, maybe go to that 3 or 4 ot. Then with your worms, your longer worms, you might actually go with something like the 4 or the 5 ot. Just a little bit extra length on that hook to cover more of that bait uh, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. So 4 ot has been a great all around hook for us. We use these for all of our Texas rigs, basically from creatures, craws, worms, etc. It covers the whole gamut. And then also we love to throw the flukes on these weightless. And so these hooks get used and abused. We put them through the ringer and so we have to stock up because we love them. But that really wraps things up as far as the unboxing portion this month. We just got more stuff for the Texas rig. We have a lot of baits right now that I need to go through and that's why I didn't order as many soft plastics this month. I wanna go ahead and get through some of the ones that we do have, but of course, we gotta have the hooks and the weights, otherwise we ain't gonna be throwing this stuff. We gotta have some jigs. I haven't been throwing as many jigs lately. I've just been out of them, so I had to make a new order. And then the line, depending on how much we get out of these, we'll be using this line for two or three reels. And that will be that. I can't wait to get out on the water with some of this stuff tomorrow and actually throw it in a video for you guys, have some fun catching some fish but I also promised you guys some summer fishing tips so let me go ahead and get into those real quick so I'm really just trying to think of the questions I get asked on a day-to-day -day basis a lot through Instagram some in the comments of our videos a lot of people have just been saying the bite is tough lately the bite is tough I'm not getting any bites and so here's what I recommend get out at sunrise or sunset if you can. That's gonna be ideal. Tie on some top water. See if you can't get that top water bite going during the summertime. That's what it's known for. Try and get out there at sunrise. Try and stay out till sunset. Have some fun throwing some top water baits to really incite those big strikes and you will have a lot of fun. Maybe, you'll, maybe you don't get too many bites but you get a big fish. Or maybe they're tearing it up on top water that morning and it's one of those mornings or evenings where you get 10 fish on the top water. So I'm talking about frogs, buzz baits. Don't be afraid of a trailer hook if you've never heard of a trailer hook look up trailer hooks. You can add a second one to your buzz bait, maybe miss a few less fish on them. Whopper ploppers, $15 lures go out there and get you one. They actually offer them on Shop Carl's as well. Don't be afraid to check them out and get one of those in your order. So first step is just get out there and fish. Maybe try some top water. I think you guys will have a lot of fun this summer doing that before it starts to cool off and that bite is no longer around. Definitely get after it. But what's next? For me lately, it's been Texas rigs and crankbaits or something very close to it. Just a moving bait where you can cover water, a bottom bait, and top water I feel like it's not you just got to identify what the fish want that day because the bite can be tough but in the summertime usually they'll go out and they'll congregate in a certain area of the pond or that lake where it's comfortable it's nice and cozy they're not up in the bank where it's all shallow and the water gets baked by the sun and they're burning up and sometimes they are by the bank during the summer it's just it's a it's a mind game these fish they play tricks on you man every day is different mind game. that is why you go out there and first for me I'll throw the top water for a second if I don't hit prime top water time or if it doesn't look like a frog alicious pond then I'll go straight for probably something moving because I want to cover some water for me lately that has been either a chatterbait or a crankbait a lot of the Guggen squad th crankbaits I've been throwing so the clutch has been obviously it's a big contender I've been throwing the clutch the banger the recons or I, the mini recons but I've been throwing all those crankbaits and getting catches so the crankbaits have been on point it's just a matter of fishing them in the right spots so don't be afraid to walk around the whole pond with that crankbait and figure out where they're at maybe they're by the banks maybe they head out a little deeper just be aware of that as you make your catches and try and pinpoint a pattern and stay on them now next is going to be like the texas rig or the jig for me these have been just devastating so go ahead and tie on a texas rig the thing is they're so versatile you can almost treat it as a moving bait if you put on a let's say a crack and craw for example you can have those claws fluttering through the water almost like a chatterbait if you just reel it with the weight on there but you can also fish it on the bottom which is going to be what most of us do fish it in that heavy cover where they're hanging out at or also just try and cast out random spots and see what happens because you don't know if they're going to be hitting up close to the bank if they're out deep maybe there's a drop off in that lake my opinion is there's no secret summertime bait it's just a matter of finding what they want that day. So throw your whole tackle box. If you throw your whole tackle box, then you know. 
That's what I do oftentimes. I go out there, I don't know what I'm throwing. I might have a new lure or a new bait I'm excited about, so I throw it. If it doesn't catch anything, that sucks. I'll catch them on it the next day. Let me go ahead and see what they're biting on today. Maybe I vary up just the color sometimes. You know, we, we overthink this stuff oftentimes, so I feel like so. <laughs> so don't overthink it. Whether it's the color or it's the shape or the size of the bait you're throwing, just kind of mix it up. Vary up your tactics, and I think you'll have a lot better luck this summer because a lot of us just get caught throwing one bait. We cover the pond and we think they're not biting today. Well, that's not the fact. Find out what they want in your tackle box, pinpoint their location in that body of water, and just crank them because once you find them in the summertime and the bite is on. <laughs> Thank you, Carls, for sponsoring today's episode, and we'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.